So what I would like to do today is I would like to go through a useful little app on Microsoft Office 365 that's called Microsoft Forms and Microsoft Quizzes in order to set self-marking quizzes for your students. First thing to do is open Office 365. Once you've done that and you're on this home screen, simply click on Forms, which is that little green icon just there. If you can't see that, if you've opened up Outlook, for instance, by accident, you'll always see this kind of... I think it's nine squares at the top. This will let you access all your apps and you can select it from there as well. When you open forms, you'll get this green kind of background most of the time. And if you haven't used Office, uh, if you haven't used forms before, you will not see these. These are all quizzes that I've already created, all surveys I've already created. You'll have none of this. What you'll be presented is with is my forms. So these are the forms that you create yourself. Those that are shared with you by other people, shared with me, and group forms, forms that you may have contributed to collaboratively and that you're a part of as well. For this, we're just interested in my forms because this is what you are creating for yourself to share with your students. You're given two options. You've got new form and you've got new quiz. These are different and it's important to know the difference between them. With a form, a form basically is a survey. So with the survey, you collect the data. However, you're not given a right or a wrong answer afterwards, so you can self-correct. If you do a quiz, however, you do get that option of setting the correct answers so that students can see if they're right or if they're incorrect. So it's important if you're doing a self-assessment quiz, click on a new quiz, just like that. This will take you to this page, and you'll see at the top you've got two tabs questions and responses. Questions basically is your quiz that you're setting. So you can type in the questions that you want to answer, the answers that you want to give the students if it's multiple choice. For instance, that's where you design your quiz itself. Responses are what you see after the quiz is filled in and you can see the answers that the students have given you. You can see a breakdown of different data from the questions, for instance, percentage right, percentage wrong, which um, question which options students are going for perhaps so you can kind of identify where maybe gaps are you can also export that data in excel which is very very useful as well but that's in the responses section for the time being while we're building the quiz we want to look at questions so the first thing you do when you're creating your quiz is give it a name so i'm going to do um Wherever you see this icon of a kind of a little mountain in the background, that's where you can insert images. So if you want to give it a nice little image in the title, you can do that there. Underneath, you can enter a description. Sure. I might remove that. Now, once you click off, it looks like you can't edit that again, but you can. All you simply do for any part that you want to change, hover over it, it'll go gray, click on it, and it opens those options up for you. So you can make any changes that you want. Perfect. Now it comes to designing the quiz. The quiz itself, you can break down, you can do it as one long quiz, so one long sheet almost, or you can do it on different pages. So you might have a page for questions and answers, um, sorry, for Spanish to English questions. You might have a page for English to Spanish questions, and you might want a, pa a page where you test um, English into Spanish written translation. That's how I usually set up mine. If you're going to go from that option where you have different pages for different sections, you need to add something to your quiz that's called a section. I like to start off by adding my sections first and then adding my questions underneath. So how to add a section is as follows. Click on add new. You'll always be given these choices along the top. And as you've probably worked out where you've got choice, text, rate, and date, those are question types. We don't want question types at the minute. What we want is we want a section. So I'm going to click on this little arrow. It gives me a few more options. And right at the bottom, you'll see it says section. Click on that. Once again, you open it, and it's almost like a mini title again. So you can say section, you can give it a title and a description. So, so I've given my first one, section one, Spanish to English. So what I've done now is I've said, uh, select the correct option. So that's my first section. I've got my second section that I want to do. I want to do English to Spanish as well. So I'm going to repeat that first. Now, what you might do is you might find that you're not happy with the order and you might be thinking, right, how do I change these about? And if you try and click and drag, it won't work. It's dead easy. If you look at those three little dots where I'm just hovering above now, where it says more settings for section, click on that. And what you can do is click on move. From there, 
just simply drag or use the arrows to change the order in which your questions uh, your sections appear and it's as simple as that so don't panic just look for the three dots so now it comes to filling out the quiz so click on the section that you want to fill out first so i want to ask some questions spanish into english click underneath add new now you've got several different question choices you've got multiple choice text rating date a like art which is where you give a kind of like a grid you can rank things from most important least important upload a file and net promoter score for this one i just want to teach you the basics i think the most useful one first of all is multiple choice so let's create a multiple choice question first so i'm in my spanish to english english section one that my students always get confused is this one Perfect. So you type in the thing that you want to test them on. So I want to see if they know what El Autocar is. And you can create some options. So option one, I'm going to give a wrong answer and put the car. Number two, I'm going to give them another wrong answer and put the um, local bus. Now I've run out of options here, so it looks like I can't actually put any more options for this, even though out of the card is actually a coach. All you do is simply to add another option is click on add option. I'm going to put the coach. There we go. Now I've got my three answers there that I'm going to give them the three options. To select your right answer, simply click on the little tick and it'll come up correct answer. What you can do is you can make them worth points. So I'm going to say that's quite a basic multiple choice one. I'm going to make it worth one point. And what it does is it ties up the amount of points that they get at the end of the quiz. So that's dead easy. If you want to make a compulsory question, click on the required just there. So I'm going to repeat now. Again, I've come off that section there. To get back in to add a new one, just click on it. Add new. So let's do another option. Let's do oh, which other option do they get confused with a lot? I know. Lovely. Good old prior attempts. So, when you're putting together your quiz, always have in mind what you think the common misconceptions are. Just obviously that helps with retrieval practice as well and to really bring to the forefront those common mistakes. So, and again, to select my correct, correct answer, all I do is click on the tick. I'm happy with that. What's worth? That's perfect. So there's my first little section there that I've done. Now, I want to show you some other little tricks. So I'm going to change this to section two rather than English into Spanish. What I want to do is I'm going to change it to grammar. This works really nicely with grammar, especially if you're looking for tenses. So what I want to show you now is how to do a multiple choice. So we've seen basic choice before. Now I want to show you multiple choice because in the previous answers, it'll only let me choose one correct answer. Now I want them to pick a series of correct answers. So let's go for identify the verbs in the prepper tense. And this is one that often causes a lot of confusion. So Again, think out what your options are going to be. So I'm going to mix it a few imperfect in. I'm going to mix a few present tense in. And obviously the proper tense. So I'm going to put that together now. There we go. So I've written in all my options now. All I want to do is go through and tick the ones that are correct. So like before, we take the answers that are correct, but if I do it now, and I say, for instance, viaje is an example of the prior tense, and I also want to put cantaro, it'll only let me choose one. So this is where you have to know how to manage this type of question. If you scroll to the bottom of the question, you will see it says multiple answers. Click that, and that just means that that function is turned on. So now if I want to go for conseguí, jugué, compré, I can select those as correct. If you select one that's wrong, so for instance, if I put, I don't know, viajo, all you simply do to make that is just unselect it and it'll take it away from being a correct answer. So if I go to Traducción al Español, click on Add New and click Text. So 
I might put in here. Um, I play basketball. So I've set my question down. And what you do is to add your correct answers. So it kind of pin check it. You click on add answer. So I'm going to start off with the correct form. Now there's a couple of things you have to bear in mind when you're doing this. I'm going to talk you through these as we go. So I'm going to give the standard correct answer now. Once you click off it, it accepts that as a correct answer. To add more correct answers, all you do is click correct answer. So for instance, if you don't want to penalize, if they forget the add, you can put that in. Personally, I'm a bit of a stickler for that, so I'm going to, I'm going to have it marked it wrong. <laughs> um, another thing to watch is, Always do an option without a full stop and always do it with a full stop unless you want to penalize students for not using full stops as well. So that's always something to watch out as for as well. In terms of capital letters, so for instance, if a kid forgets to put a capital letter, so I'm using the same as the first option there, albeit without a capital letter. If I click off that, it doesn't put it in. Now that means that I'll accept it with or without a capital letter, as long as they have that combination of letters. For me, that worth two points. Another thing to consider for this is accents and students not being able to use accents. So how I get around this is, for instance, if I do another one, I'll use that. And what I'll do is I'll just open brackets and type in the letters for them. So I'll say, and that basically means that students can copy and paste that from the actual question itself when they come to type it in if they are unsure of how to do that. So I'll do that. And when I'm doing the answers for this one, I'll give obviously the standard correct one. You've got to think of all the combinations. This is the only downside I would say to it is you've got to think of combinations, maybe punctuation. Um, so for instance, I could potentially put a comma there. And because I've done it with the comma there, without a full stop, I'm going to have to copy and paste it with a full stop. I'm thinking as well, if the students missed that accent off the E in the exam, that would be quite a serious error. But if they missed it off football, it wouldn't be. So I'm going to allow for that. So I'm going to take that off and allow that as an option as well. And again, I'm going to have to repeat that with the full stop. So that's the only kind of little bit of a downside to that. So just so you're aware. In terms of one other little question type I would like to show you, and this works really nicely with grammar. Um, so I'm going to click on that section again. So I've opened it up. I'm going to add new. And it is this ranking. Now I like this and it works really well with adverbs of time or time phrases. So for instance, what you've got to do when you do this is you set the options in the correct order. And what happens is forms automatically mixes those up for you. So just remember, put them in the correct order. Otherwise, it'll mark them wrong. So I'll go for... I'm happy with that. If there's one that I think might cause a little bit of confusion, so I'm looking at this, I'm thinking rarely and almost never that might cause a bit of confusion. To get rid of it, and just click on the little bin. So I've removed that option there. Again, look at how many points you've got. Are you happy with those amount of points? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to knock it down to seven. And there you go. What you need to do now is you need to share it. So you can preview the quiz to see what it looks like at any point by clicking on that preview. And this will show you what the students will see. So this is my first section. And see the next section, how it looks there. Have multiple choice. I've got me rank in there, click on dragon. So as you can see, it's all mixed up. And I can see my last section there. So that's how my quiz looks. So I'm happy with that. You can also check the mobile version as well, see what it looks like on mobile phones. And then you need to share it to get students to access it. To do that, all you do is you click on share at the top. And what you need to do is the follower. Microsoft's quite hot on who you share things and keeping things locked down and tight. If your students don't have access, for instance, to VDI or to Microsoft Office from your organization, then I suggest you share it in the following way. Click on them, where it says only people in my organization can respond and click on anyone with a link and respond. That'll open it up to all of your students or whoever you send the site to send that link to. And click on copy for that. That's the website link and simply email it and share it.
So now what I would like to do with you is just look at how the results come in and what you can do with the results. So first thing to do is open the quiz that you set. So mine was Modero Uno Refaso, and I've asked the two guinea pigs to fill it out for me. So that's been filled out. You'll it'll come automatically up with the questions page again. What you want to do this time is click on responses. When you've got responses, it will come up in a little circle at the side there showing you. This is the first page that you'll get. So you'll see how many responses you've got, the average point score, and if it's opened or if it's closed as well. You can print a, sum, uh, print a summary of the responses. You can create a summary link as well. So what you get is you get a pie chart. You can see where the students answered. So you can see everyone got that one right, the coach. So there's your responses there. You can also see the full answers there. So somebody put Ballon Man instead of Ballon uh, Ballon Festo. So handball instead of basketball, I can comment on that. Um Jorge Al Football. So both people got that right, which was nice. So even though I got two different variants of it, somebody missed a come around, somebody missed an accent of that football. So I'm seeing my answers are working correctly there. If you scroll back up, what you can do is you can open this in Excel. Click on that and it'll open an Excel document for you. And what you can do is you can see when the quiz was taken, completion time. You can set it to record people's emails if you're doing it within an organization so you can see who's doing it. You could also ask students to write their names if you want to keep tabs on who was doing it and who wasn't. And you can go along and see the answers in that format as a kind of grid rather than as the kind of diagrams below. One last little thing you can do as well is if you can click on review answers. This is quite powerful. So you can see each student's uh, response. So you can click on respondent one, zero, for instance, there to see their answers. And for instance, if you notice an error, so for instance, in this one, they got no points, even though they got one, two, three, four, five, six options, you can manually change that. So you can change that. Um, if you miss an option out as well, and they mark it, you can give them a mark for that. And the last thing you can do is you can leave some feedback as well by typing in there. So you can say, well done, even though we're not told not to give too much praise and to give constructive feedback. For this one, I might say, for instance, target revise regular forms, regular ways. And that just a little review that will also go back to the student as well. So that's one added little thing you can do, which is quite powerful.